The development of aggressive expansionist countries and geopolitical instability characterized the world before World War II. Germany, under the totalitarian Nazi regime, pursued securement and territorial reformity in Europe. Italy, led by Benito Mussolini, sought to establish a new Roman Empire. Imperial Japan, driven by militaristic nationalism, expanded its sphere of influence in Asia and the Pacific. The United States, despite its traditional loyalty, became increasingly concerned about these threats to global order. However, it lacked a robust, centralized intelligence agency capable of collecting and analyzing the strategic information necessary to counter these dangers. Recognizing this strategic deficiency, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt took action. Under the recommendation of William J. Donovan, a decorated World War I veteran and prominent lawyer, Roosevelt created the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, in June 1942. The mandate of the OSS was twofold, intelligence gathering and the carrying out of black ops operations. This was a turning point in American military and intelligence strategy, the first coordinated effort for espionage, sabotage, and subversion beyond traditional warfare. Donovan, known as Wild Bill for his courageous leadership style, became the driving force behind the OSS. He envisioned an organization distinct from existing intelligence structures, bringing together a diverse array of individuals. Recruits included academics, athletes, linguists, and experts from various fields, selected for their ingenuity, bravery, and unconventional thinking. The OSS was divided into vital departments, each fulfilling a specialized role. Secret intelligence collected information through traditional espionage techniques, infiltrating enemy networks and intercepting communications. Special operations was responsible for sabotage missions, training resistance fighters, and conducting unconventional warfare. X-2 was the counter-espionage unit, tasked to protect sensitive information and counter enemy intelligence operations. Other crucial divisions included research and analysis, responsible for interpreting gathered intelligence and morale operations, which deployed psychological warfare tactics. The OSS workforce, as diverse as its operations included soldiers, academics, linguists, engineers, journalists, and more. The agency's recruitment practices emphasized skills, intellect, and resourcefulness over traditional military backgrounds. OSS agents infiltrated occupied Europe and Asia, establishing links with local resistance networks and providing training, arms, and supplies. The OSS conducted sabotage operations against critical infrastructure, hindering troop movements, disrupting production lines, and undermining enemy morale. In France, the so-called Jetberg teams, which were joint American, British, and French soldiers, parachuted into coordinate guerrilla activities and prepare for the D-Day landings. These Jetberg teams consisted of two to four people, mostly men, but there supposedly were women in these teams, and most, if not all, the Jets were volunteers. Their motto was, Surprise, Kill, Vanish, and they certainly stuck to that motto. These teams were instrumental for the further development of special operations forces in the years thereafter. Getting back to the members of the Jets, the OSS adopted a progressive approach by including female operatives in its paramilitary units, women like Virginia Hall, who earned the Gestapo's designation as the most dangerous of all Allied spies, played vital roles within Jetberg teams and OGs. They served as radio operators, couriers, and full-fledged agents alongside their male counterparts. In Yugoslavia, OSS operatives supported Tito's partisans against German occupation. In the Far East, they worked alongside Chinese guerrillas and aided downed Allied pilots. They adapted existing technologies and developed new ones for espionage and clandestine warfare. They established clandestine radio networks to maintain contact with resistance groups and operatives. The research and development branch created specialized equipment, including silenced pistols, compact explosives, and disguises. OSS agents were trained in lockpicking, demolitions, map reading, and close quarters combat. They utilized propaganda, psychological warfare, and disinformation tactics. 
the Office of Strategic Services expanded its role beyond traditional intelligence gathering, developing a significant paramilitary component during World War II. This shift led to specialized units designed for sabotage, unconventional warfare, and supporting resistance movements in occupied territories. Operational groups, or OGs, formed the backbone of the OSS paramilitary capabilities. These elite teams infiltrated occupied territories, often via parachute or clandestine sea insertion, focusing on sabotaging enemy infrastructure and logistics. OGs disrupted critical railways and communication lines, conducted ambushes, and armed and trained local resistance groups across Europe and Asia. Maritime units played a key role in the OSS's seaborne operations. Utilizing a variety of vessels, they infiltrated agents and supplies into enemy-held territories, conducted reconnaissance missions, and supported sabotage efforts along coastlines. Their activities were essential to facilitating resistance movements in Norway, Greece, and the Philippines. Another unit worth mentioning is the wireless intercept and direction finding teams. These teams specialized in intercepting and analyzing enemy radio communications, providing valuable intelligence on enemy movements, intentions, and communications networks. All OSS paramilitary operatives, regardless of gender, underwent rigorous training that emphasized physical and psychological resilience. Skills such as demolitions, map reading, close quarters combat, and clandestine communications were integral to their training. The demanding selection process prioritized adaptability, resourcefulness, and the ability to operate independently under extreme pressure. The end of World War II brought about significant changes to the American intelligence landscape. Despite its wartime successes, the Office of Strategic Services was disbanded in September of 1945 by order of President Harry S. Truman. Several factors contributed to this decision. Firstly, the OSS, under the leadership of William Wild Bill Donovan, had envisioned a permanent centralized intelligence agency in the post-war era, a concept met with resistance from existing military and intelligence communities. Additionally, some viewed the OSS's clandestine activities and unconventional methods as incompatible with peacetime operations. However, the emerging Cold War and the recognition of a continued need for intelligence capabilities led to the passage of the National Security Act of 1947. This landmark legislation established a unified defense structure through the creation of the Department of Defense, and more importantly, for our focus, it created the Central Intelligence Agency. The CIA was tasked with coordinating the nation's intelligence activities and providing analysis to policymakers. The transition from the OSS to the CIA was not an outright termination and replacement. Many of the OSS's functions and personnel were directly absorbed into the newly formed agency. The covert operations and paramilitary expertise that were the hallmark of the OSS were integrated into the CIA's Special Activities Division. This branch became responsible for clandestine operations, sabotage, and support for foreign resistance movements, a direct continuation of the OSS's wartime legacy. The influence of the OSS extended beyond the CIA. Other specialized units evolved from its structure. The U.S. Army Green Beret traced their lineage back to former OSS operational groups. Their unconventional warfare capabilities and focus on training and supporting indigenous forces echo the OSS's operational model. Additionally, the Department of State's Bureau of Intelligence and Research was created to fill the analytical role performed by the Research and Analysis Branch of the OSS. The Cold War era saw the CIA's Special Activities Division engage in covert actions and proxy conflicts across the globe. From training and supporting anti-communist rebels in Central America and Southeast Asia to conducting clandestine operations in Eastern Europe, the CIA's paramilitary arm sought to counter Soviet influence on a vast stage. In the post-9-11 world, the CIA's paramilitary focus has shifted decisively towards counterterrorism. Working closely alongside elite special operations units, like the military's Joint Special Operations Command, the CIA has been at the forefront of targeted strikes against terrorist leaders and networks. Covert drone operations, raids, and the training and equipping of local forces have become key tools for the agency in global hotspots. 
Technological innovation has radically transformed the nature of CIA paramilitary operations. Precision-guided munitions, advanced surveillance capabilities, and cyber warfare techniques provide the agency with unprecedented reach and a wider range of tactical options. The CIA, by necessity, operates at the cutting edge of technology to maintain its advantage in a rapidly evolving security landscape. However, the CIA's paramilitary activities are not without controversy. The lack of transparency surrounding these operations raises concerns about accountability and oversight. The use of lethal force, particularly through drone strikes, has garnered significant criticism regarding civilian casualties and potential legal violations. Moreover, the long-term consequences of covert interventions in foreign nations remain a subject of heated debate and will do so for many years to come. If you like what we're doing here, consider subscribing and leave your thoughts and recommendations in the comments. See you in the next video.